Hello and welcome back to session 7 on uh, quality control and improvement using Minitab. So, we are trying to see uh, tools that are used in quality for visualization, data visualization like that. So, some of the tools we have already discussed uh, in previous sessions and uh, today we will highlight uh, some more uh, additional uh, uh, techniques which are used in quality and which uh, has an interface in Minitab. And, uh, so, uh, what we are doing in the last session is that we are discussing about cause and effect diagram. So, let us go to that and try to uh, try to recap what we have seen last time. So, uh, one of the thing that we mentioned over here in cause and effect diagram is that all are potential cause over here. Okay. So, uh, there are 5 M's and 1 E's uh, over here. So, uh, environment is one of the another important aspects which is not shown over here. Maybe uh, uh, some of the uh, causes uh, and sub causes. Uh, may not be present in certain scenarios. It depends on uh, what type of problem we are addressing like that. Here we can see is that uh, man, uh, material, methods, machines, measurements. So, personal means man over here. So, in this case. So, uh, 5 M's are present over here, but environment is not so prominent over here. So, there is no uh, as such environmental influence which is uh, creating defects in the tank like that. So, these are the uh, what we are seeing over here. These are the uh, causes and uh, these are the uh, and uh, this within every every type of cause what we can say is x over here and these are the sub, sub causes what we can see defectives from supplier can lead to defects on the tank like that. So, this is uh, basically why we can think of and these are the x1, x2s like that variables and within that sub variables we can think of. So, x2, x3 over here. So, uh, this we can think about x. So, within x there can be potential uh, sub variables. So, x 1 1 like this, x 1 2 like this. So, x 1 3. So, uh, for a, a given cause can there can be sub causes also. So, Minitab has an option to add sub causes also, sub sub causes also like that. Okay. So, uh, so there are uh, 5 M's and 1 E's like that. So, uh, and all these causes what we are mentioning over here is basically uh, we can think about these are potential cause that that, that means that there are evidence or uh, either from empirical relationship what we have seen by scatter plots or something like that or uh, maybe uh, theoretically there are some relationship that exist like that from literature we can figure out those things like that. So, before we identify all potential causes uh, much uh, brainstorming is required to identify potential causes because uh, we have to eliminate the causes or minimize the effect of the causes basically. So, that defects on the tank can be reduced. So, which is the CTQ what we want to reduce. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so how do we do it in Minitab? So, let me just illustrate uh, in Minitab how we are doing that. So, so for that I will take some examples uh, which we have already uh, hypothetical examples over here which is taken from book and uh, uh, here what we can see is that uh, these are the uh, uh, dimensions. So, uh, 5 m's and 1 e is over here and the sub causes for these are highlighted over here. So, this is in excel sheet what we can do is that we can just copy paste this one to Minitab uh, worksheet. So, uh, our worksheet that we are using was uh, named as visual data like that and we will place it over here and so we will copy this one uh, uh, causes and sub causes like that. So, here we will just uh, copy paste this one over here and uh, whenever we have done that we are ready with the use of Minitab. So, what we can do is that we can just save this one save worksheet and uh, replace the earlier one. So, that this data is saved like that. So, do you want to replace? Yes, I want to replace this one. So, this data gets saved over here and what we will do is that we will go to now uh, we want to use uh, uh, draw this diagrammatically and try to see and so in this case what we go uh, what we do is that stat over here and then go to quality tools and there is a cause and effect uh, option over here. Click cause and effect over here and then there will be uh, causes uh, mentioned over. So, uh, if you have not mentioned this one, so it will be blank like this whenever you start this one and effect will also be blanked over here which you can title like that. So, uh, you have to just click this one in personal, personal means man. So, in this case and then you have to identify where you have saved that one which is related to man over here. So, I have saved in uh, C 33 columns like that. So, I will highlight that one. Then second one I, I will highlight the next one. So, uh, machines. So, then I will highlight the uh, third one materials uh, where are the sub, sub uh, 
causes like that. So, methods. So, then again I will go to uh, methods over here, then uh, measurement over here. So, I will I will highlight measurements over here and the final one is environmental issues that is considered over here. So, effect is let us say that defect is the uh, uh, defective items that is being produced like that. So, so uh, you, you can just name it. I, this is hypothetical. So, I, so effect is y y category over here. So, we can say some forms of defects like that which is creating defective items like that. Okay. So, uh, title you can always give uh, let us say cause and effect diagram or something like that C and I E or something like that. So, uh, I click OK over here and immediately what will happen is that you will get a cause and effect diagram with titles and all. So, if you see and maximize this one you will find that different categories are given over here. So, you can just uh, change the font size over here and these are the categories that is already identified. So, immediately this is like a fish bone what you can see is that defective items are produced which is in red and these are the uh, sub causes which is leading to this one. So, this sub causes uh, we need to see and uh, and try to minimize the effects of this. So, if there is a problem with alloy, we need to monitor and uh, we need to experiment and try to figure out which is the best alloy that does not pro uh, produce any defects like that. So, uh, this comes under experimentation like that. So, uh, we have to uh, our objective is to uh, create cause and effect diagram. So, I know what are the potential cause which is creating the failures and then we try to block those causes or minimize the effect of those causes like that. So, Minitab gives you an option to draw the cause and effect diagram which I wanted to illustrate over here. Okay. So, uh, then uh, what we have is that so the cause and effect diagram. So, then another important uh, tools uh, sometimes we use uh, whether it is uh, uh, quality management, whether it is uh, lean management like that. So, some of the uh, things that comes into our mind is that uh, process flow diagram. So, one, one important aspect is process flow diagram over here. Okay. So, uh, what is required is that to identify where the problem is, uh, what we do is that we try to draw the flow diagrams of the process. So, this is a hypothetical example where we are seeing that credit card processing, bill processing like that. So, how it goes to the client end and billing is done and internally billing processing is done and then it goes to the client end like that. So, there can be mistakes and any of the sub processes like that. So, so, what you see is that this is the uh, information that is received, then uh, client folder is located over here. So, uh, then updated client folder over here. So, uh, uh, these are some information sheets over here, buyer information sheets like that. So, uh, then update on clients like that and send the billing statement like that. This is one of the hypothetical way there can be processes and sub processes like that. So, this can be process 1, process 2, uh, process 3 like that. So, uh, all our processes over here. So, these are sub processes that leads to final billing statement over here. Okay. So, any problem in the billing statement can be uh, can uh, can uh, uh, happen. Uh, uh, and uh, in any of the sub processes like that due to uh, due to uh, any mistakes in the sub processes like that. So, over here also we can we can uh, just draw the cause and effect diagram for this and we can figure out what are the sub causes over here. So, maybe by ignorance we have done this and that is due to uh, manpower or somebody who is uh, supervising the things or who is uh, coding the information like that uh, in the database like that. So, that, that, that can happen like that. So, uh, then uh, there can be other reasons like uh, over here methods, machines, materials. It may not be manufacturing, it may be service processes also. So, you can draw cause and effect diagram in various processes like that. Here it is inaccuracy in submission of the bills to the client like that. How much we can be accurate like that? What can go wrong basically? Those are the causes. We want to block those causes like that. So, uh, whenever I have a process flow diagram, immediately what I can do is that uh, what are the failure, failure chance, uh, where it can fail basically. So, those things uh, are the causes and we want to block those causes. So, uh, everywhere manufacturing service, everywhere cause and effect diagram is required and also we make a rough uh, flow diagram over here. We, we try to draw a flow diagram. Minitab does not have any option to draw the flow diagram like that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you can explore other softwares where flow diagram can be drawn like that. So, okay. So, maybe uh, smart draw is one of the one of the option where we can draw flow diagrams like that and because that that uh, uh, makes a visual impact and immediately people try to identify with a, within that uh, n number of sub processes where, where something can go wrong and which is leading to inaccuracy in uh, inaccuracy in submission of the billing to the clients like that. Okay. So, uh, so Minitab interface we have seen that how to use cause and effect diagram. So, we will come to a different topics uh, and uh, uh, we will try to 
see what are the other things we need to know primarily uh, before we go into quality control and improvement. So, you see the data that I am representing over here are secondary data which is known as secondary data. Somebody else has generated that one I am just using those data. Those are known as secondary data like that. Primary data what I actually collect as a uh, quality engineer or quality professionals like that from the process directly I, I rely on this. So, this is the primary data source like that and this is the most uh, authentic data which is used for analysis any kind of analysis. So, we need primary data which is collected by me ok. Sometimes secondary data does not uh, make much sense because the information that is required uh, or uh, uh, related to a process may not be available in secondary data like that which may be of primary focus for my uh, research or any other analysis or projects like that. So, so we believe on primary data. So, whenever I am generating uh, primary data can come from various sources actual observations uh, survey questionnaires like that and maybe experimentation what we talked about like uh, design of experimentations which is basically done by me when, when I am trying to improve your process. So, systematic variation inducing variability and then uh, trying to see what is uh, what is the effect on Y like that. So, on CDQs like that ok. So, these are primary information primary data information which is collected. So, always believe on primary data uh, source uh, for any quality control and improvement ok. Secondary data is not so much reliable when we are talking about quality control and improvement. So, you have to go to the process collect the data and information and then act on that data based on the data analysis you act on that. So, make some inference make some decision and act on that. So, uh, that is the objective. So, it can be primary or secondary. So, we are talking about primary data source that on which analysis is done when we talk about quality control and improvement ok. Another important aspects is that whenever I have told about cause and effect diagram. So, uh, we can we can think of various uh, how to handle those causes because I want to minimize the effect of the causes or I want to eliminate those causes like that. So, so, whenever I have a single cause in that case very easy to solve this is not uh, realistic one, but there can be only one cause uh, which is creating defects like that. So, there can be one cause and uh, if we have to go to the root cause over here. So, if you have to go to the root cause over here. So, what can be done is that we can use uh, 5 y analysis y y 5 times like that and we come to the root cause like that. So, uh, so this is uh, quite easy and this can be done. So, I ask a question why this is happening then subsequently I ask again why this is uh, if this is the reason why why that is also happening like that. So, like this I come to the root cause and then I eliminate the cause like that or minimize the cause like that. So, this is uh, impractical scenarios where only one cause is leading to defects in CTQs like that. And there can be scenario when we have multiple causes, but the uh, there, there may be uh, they are independent basically. So, they can be independent causes which is basically uh, independent. Uh, uh, so, this uh, type of scenario. So, when they are independent. Uh, so, uh, what happens is that uh, there is little uh, interference between the causes like that they are very independent like that. And uh, in that case what analysis uh, quality quality tools is used over here is uh, known as failure mode and effect analysis. So, if it is done in the design stage it is known as design failure mode and effect analysis. Uh, and if it is done on the process stage when 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 it is uh, conformance stage when we are just implementing these those things and trying to uh, see the CTQ effect like that uh, in the process. So, that is known as process uh, failure mode and effect analysis. So, failure mode and effect analysis is to uh, try to minimize the effect of the clauses, uh, causes or maybe eliminate those causes occurrence of those causes like that ok. So, that is failure mode and effect analysis we will discuss something uh, some briefly about this uh, failure mode and effect analysis which is an important tool in quality. So, but you have to remember that all these causes what we are what we are trying to address over here are mostly independent like that. So, one does not influence the other one like that. So, uh, if I take corrective action on one that does not uh, impact the other causes like that. So, uh, or there is no relationship between cause 1, cause 2 and cause 3 or very minimal interface like that. But scenarios uh, this is also sometimes impractical like that, uh, but uh, uh, nowadays they are trying to uh, make modular design. So, in that case it becomes easier to handle those things. So, so in that case uh, sometimes uh, this design failure mode effect analysis uh, is quite efficient uh, to handle the uh, uh, or minimize the uh, defects or defective items like that ok. So, uh, so, if, if this is a causes. So, scenario design scenario should be like this 
So, uh, all are independent whenever something goes wrong. Uh, so, I can just replace that one. So, immediately a modular type of designs like that. So, minimum interplay between the causes like that. So, uh, so, uh, so that is the most favorable scenario, but scenario may not be like that where uh, scenario may be most typically like this cause 1, cause 2, cause 3 and cause 4 where there is a fair amount of interaction that means uh, one uh, uh, they together act on the voice like that. So, there is a uh, interaction between cause 1, cause 2, cause 3 like that cause 4 and there is a complex scenario what we are seeing in this uh, and then eliminating the cause becomes very difficult or minimizing the effect of the cause becomes very difficult. So, there is a interplay between the causes over here. So, there is a interplay between the x variables over here and that can impact the y over here. So, if that is the scenario when uh, multiple x are interacting with each other. So, in this case scenario is not so simple uh, this uh, needs to be addressed in a different way. So, when we when we are uh, facing such kind of scenario mostly what we will see is that uh, we need design of experiments for that to deal with that one ok. So, uh, there are three uh, three ways we can deal with this one is uh, uh, yy analysis if the causes are single causes like that and uh, we can address that one or maybe we can use failure mode and effect analysis when the causes are mostly independent like that. Uh, and the third one may be when interplay is there we use design of experiments or statistical experimentation uh, to uh, minimize the effect of the cause like that or set the uh, uh, set the factor x where we are what we are mentioning over here in such a level so that we get the best delivery on y or ctqs like that ok. So, uh, these are the different ways. So, let me try to uh, just briefly talk about uh, failure mode and effect analysis. What is failure mode and effect analysis? How it is used in design? Uh, quality of design. So, if I have to improve the quality of design. So, in that case this is a typical example what was taken water data system for any residential homes like that. So, uh, and so uh, within the water data system there can be thermostat what you can see over here. So, there is a thermostat which controls the temperature basically ok. So, uh, and uh, and it can fail it can also fail like that ok. So, uh, then there will be a potential failure mode of this item or thermostat which is within the or component which is within the uh, uh, system water heater systems like that. So, there can be multiple components like that and every components can fail every components can fail. So, if it fails that uh, in which way it will fail basically potential failure mode this is potential failure mode over here. So, uh, failure mode may be it is not reacting. So, I am taking one example over here which is thermostat and fails to react to temperature rise like that. So, uh, this is the potential failure mode ok. So, if if uh, if this happens if this happens failure happens and it does not react to the temperature what will have what is the effect on the system what is the effect on the system. So, temperature uh, water temperature will rise water turns to steam this can be the two possibilities like that. So, uh, one failure mode can lead to two effects like that. So, it is the effect 1 and effect 2 like this. So, this can be potential failure modes we can think of and then we can think of that there can be uh, one uh, effect and there can be two effects like that. So, there can be uh, sub effects like this for a potential failure mode. So, failure mode and effect 1 and effect 2 like this. So, there can be uh, multiple effects for a single failure mode like that ok. So, anyway, so we, we are talking about potential effect of the failure. So, whenever there is a failure mode and there is a effect on the whole system like that it will affect the system basically and uh, whenever there is a failure it it should be because of some causes over here. So, I have just identified hypothetically one of the cause non functional therm thermostat basically. So, this can be. So, uh, what I am trying to say is that there is a potential uh, failure th that can happen because of certain reasons like that. and uh, and then uh, uh, which uh, that reason may be of uh, several causes that may be of several causes like that. So, one failure mode uh, can can be for various reasons why this has happened because of various various failure uh, possibilities failure causes various causes of uh, uh, causes are there uh, which leads to such kind of failure basically. So, there can be multiple excess like cause and effect diagram what we are seeing. Say effect is basically uh, failure mode over here and x are the causes what we can think of over here. So, in this case uh, cause 1, cause 2 up to cause n what you can see like that ok. Uh, and then uh, every cause uh, when we are uh, trying to draw the Pareto what we have seen is that there can be uh, different reasons for uh, 
uh, failures of the systems like that. So, uh, so uh, some of the some of the reasons may be very frequently arising like that when I when I draw the Pareto which is appearing frequently and there can be scenarios like uh, uh, which is not occurring so frequently like that. So, cause every cause will have some frequency of occurrence like that ok. Uh, there is evidence that it will happen. So, because of this reason and that is why I am considering this in the uh, in the failure mode and effect analysis. So, this is the uh, basic uh, 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 format what you what you will find in failure mode and effect analysis. There will be item over here potential failure modes, potential effects will be identified on the system and all the components like that and potential cause will be identified. There can be multiple causes and for each cause what is the occurrence frequency that also that will also be noted down like that. So, is it very frequent is it not? So, here it is written remote possibility that is rarely this type of cause occurs like that. So, occurrence probability or uh, something like that we can think of. So, cause occurrence over here if this is the cause is there any detection method that we have to uh, detect uh, uh, failure because of this cause like that. So, the de detection method that is being followed over here and uh, uh, and uh, which will indicate that because this is a cause because of that. So, uh, failure has happened like that. So, this is this is the reason basically. So, uh, do I have a detection methods like that. So, is it in place? So, uh, do we have that one or there is no detection method to identify this cause ok. So, and then recommended action in case it fails. So, what is the recommended design uh, control that we have already mentioned or already already in place in the design like that. So, uh, these are the recommended control action in case it fails and because of this cause then what action to be taken like that. So, what is important is that failure mode and severity of this which is the effect. Uh, how much severe it is. So, that 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 is also important how much severe it is and then what are the causes of that because if it is very severe we have to take action. Uh, we have to block those causes which is creating this failure mode basically ok. Then uh, for every cause uh, what is the frequency of that that also we, we need to identify. Then uh, what we can think of uh, is there any detection method to identify if there is a failure because of this cause is there any detection method. Then accordingly we have a recommendation for that. So, this is uh, what what we do in basically uh, failure mode and effect analysis and there are different formats for this doing this one. So, if you go to any industry you will find that design failure mode and effect analysis format will be there. So, potential failure mode you can see over here and items is mentioned over here potential effect of failure what I mentioned will be mentioned over here and severity of this failure that means uh, this is very severe harmful to the uh, society or uh, it is mild effects that we have in the process like that or in the or in this uh, or uh, where I am using this particular environment where. So, severity in a scale of 1 to 10 they gives and uh, and there is a guideline to give the severity also ok. Then class of problem very critical like that. So, they may use some symbols like that if it is very critical. So, this type of failure mode is very critical like that. So, severity will be high basically. So, if the failure mode and effect is effects on the mankind is very high. So, in that case severity rating will be very high like that. So, these things are rated in a scale of 1 to 10 let us say severity rating what you are seeing. And uh, then potential causes over here cause will be written for a failure mode. So, one failure mode we have identified let us say and there can be because of C1 and C2. C1 occurrence rating will also be given over here. If it is very frequently occurring this type of cause we can give it a rating of 10. So, here also a rating of 1 to 10 will be used over here and uh, then uh, is there any way to detect these causes over here. So, again detection for every causes will be given over here. So, in this case uh, so failure mode uh, severity of this will be written over here severity uh, one of this for failure mode. So, this is in a scale of 1 to 10 then occurrence of each of this cause will be given over here and detection. So, if I can detect immediately that rating will be less. So, if I can detect uh, and but if I, I do not have any design uh, control over here and uh, I cannot detect those cause directly goes to the customer. So, in that case rating will be high. So, it may be rated as 10 over here. So, this is 10 severity occurrence also in a scale of 1 to 10 like that and this is 1 to 10 like that 0 is not included over here. So, we because uh, what we will do is that we calculate a risk priority number out of this. So, this was uh, started in 1949 I think uh, approximately that time point uh, US military force was using this one. Then NASA has used this one in 60s around 60s then uh, automotive industry action groups uh, who developed this AIAG which uh, who develops also this um, 
QS9000, quality system 9000 for automotive industry like ISO 9000 system they have developed uh, initially and there they have given this format what you can see over here. So, this is uh, this is the generic format that they have recommended over here and uh, then they calculate a risk priority number for a given cause over here. So, uh, the risk priority number will be calculated. So, I want to prioritize. Uh, so, what they will do is that they will uh, multiply severity with uh, occurrence uh, with detection over here and that gives a risk priority number over here. So, for every cause there will be a risk priority number like that. So, risk priority number for cause 1, risk priority number for cause 2 like that. So, uh, for a given failure mode, for a given failure mode and uh, then uh, they will uh, rank all these risk priority numbers like that. So, uh, so then uh, based on that they will take corrective actions like that. Okay, and redo the FMEA. So, every time you make some improvements, you recalculate, uh, severity will not change, uh, occurrence will reduce if you take some corrective action and detection will improve. If you improve the detection, in that case, uh, your score will go down. So, if uh, the frequency of occurrence of the cause goes down, uh, the score will go down and if uh, you have a strong detection over here, so in this case score will go down also. Then a uh, risk priority number will also go down like that. So, uh, this is risk priority number a every every company decide what should be the cutoff for risk priority number like that before they take the action. So, what they will do is that they will do a Pareto analysis of this risk priority number of each of these costs and they will do a uh, uh, parrot over here. So, top risk priority number. So, maybe for cause 1 uh, is very important, cause 2 and cause 3, we have risk priority numbers and then we will tackle this first because this is very critical and the risk priority number is very high, maybe greater than 120 what we are getting. So, uh, uh, so this we have to consider over here. So, generally risk priority number uh, more than certain cutoff, let us say 100 or 120 like that. Uh, we will take corrective actions like that. So, uh, this can be severity in a scale of 1 to 10. So, what I am telling over here, this will be also 1 to 10. So, maximum score you can get 10 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10. But this does not happen generally. We have some uh, detection possibilities of this. So, in this case, uh, priority numbers can change. So, this, so then uh, severity, how do we, how do we uh, give severity ratings like that? There are guidelines. If it is very hazardous like that, uh, and uh, appears without warning, the effect is uh, very hazardous and uh, it will not give any, any indication to the customer. So, it will happen immediately uh, uh, like brake failures or something like that. It is hazardous like that. So, rating will be 10. So, severity rating will be 10 like that. Okay. And severity rating uh, will not change for, for a potential failure mode. So, that is uh, severity rating. Then occurrence uh, uh, how frequently this cause is coming like that. So, if you are taking a, if you have blocked that cause and occurrence you can reduce like that. Here also very high frequency of occurrence is very high. This type of cause is coming uh, several times. So, rating will be high. So, in this case and uh, if uh, detection method is not strong for this cause, what will happen again ranking will be 10. So, uh, so the minimum score is 1 and maximum score is uh, 1000 what we can think of. So, this is uh, uh, 1000 maximum and minimum is 1. So, it cannot be any of this cannot be 0 like that. So, that is the risk priority number what we get out of that. Okay. So, uh, this is design failure. It can be done in design stage also. It can be done in process stage also. So, whenever process in place, we want to improve that one and we want to block the cost. So, also we do process FMEA. We do process FMEA. So, if you go to a company uh, and quality control departments or quality assurance departments, what you will find that they have a failure mode effect analysis and design if you go to a uh, design uh, uh, where uh, design department, there also you can find design failure mode effect analysis is being done. So, a general guideline is given if you want to see uh, guideline is given in this QS 9000. Uh, so, uh, so th those things you can see around 1982 this was proposed like that. So, uh, Ford, General Motors and Chrysler. So, they uh, developed this one and they have developed given a framework to do uh, failure mode and effect analysis in design stage and process stage like that. So, that can be followed as a guideline and this priority number can be prioritized and then accordingly which cost to be tackled first, which cost to be taken second like that uh, we can prioritize that one. How do we block the cost and how do we minimize the effect of the cost like that in the design or in the process like that. Okay. So, there is another important uh, techniques that we will discuss in uh, 
which is used in design basically is robust design the concept of robust design. Uh, what happens in robust design is basically uh, when this was in 1980 when when this came into highlight. So, Taguchi is one of the uh, engineer who, who developed this concept of robust design uh, and uh, um, what was observed is that uh, uh, TV is manufacturing in Japan uh, Sony uh, same company uh, manufacturing in Japan is far better than manufacturing in US. So, variability of the process when when it is in Japan. So, you see very is less over here as compared to which is manufactured in Sony. So, this is the specification let us say upper specification and this is the lower specification limit of the products like that. So, uh, variation is too much over here when US products are developed. So, this is for a specific CTQ over here and uh, and in that case what was observed is that maybe picture clarity over here which is uh, color density or something like that which was monitored at that time point and uh, recorded and that. Uh, this this is that the CTQ is variability is very high for US and for Japan it is very less like that people are buying uh, Japan uh, and because of this uh, uh, behavior what is what you can see. So, picture clarity it is always hitting the target value <coughs> with minimum variability like that. So, uh, so that was happening and uh, that is why so, uh, uh, so people are buying more TVs from Japan like that ok. So, uh, then uh, why this was happening analysis was done. So, in that case what what was seen is that this uh, uh, noise variable is impacting basically outcomes of the process CTQs like that. So, then uh, uh, a concept of uh, uh, robust design came into uh, uh, in quality in quality uh, uh, methodology like that. So, uh, this was implemented in design stage also and in process stage like that. So, here interplay between these controllable variables uh, and the uh, uncontrollable variables what you see over here. So, interplay between this was used uh, and still used nowadays also uh, to get the best outputs like that. Although I cannot control the uncontrollable variables over here, uh, I, I do not have options to do that one. So, but what I can do is that I can I can always uh, minimize the effect of that. So, that is the concept of robust design what we will discuss afterwards also. So, uh, concept is hit the target and with minimum variability hit the target. So, mean and variance of the mean and variance both are important. So, this is in the design experimentation emphasize that both has to be mean should be in target and variability should be minimum and in one go I should do this in one go I, I should not do it that first I adjust the mean and then I do the variability adjustment like that. So, let us find out setting conditions like that. Let us do it together and immediately one setting and with minimum experimentation let us figure out that variation uh, will be less for the CTQ even in presence of noise variable which is the uncontrollable variable like that. That is known as robust design and this concept is very popular although it is controversial, but still people are using this in uh, design phase you go to any car industry they may be implementing this one. This may be used in screening experimentation also uh, before uh, we we implement uh, we do uh, full fledged experimentation uh, or response surface designs like that. So, this can be used for a uh, screening uh, factor screening also ok. So, that we will discuss afterwards at the end of the course ok. So, history says that history of quality management if you, if you, are, if you are just just highlighting which are the key uh, concepts that was developed at this uh, uh, which are the key things that has happened. So, uh, 1923 approximately around that that time point uh, Ronald Fisher uh, developed this design of experiments. Uh, 1924 Sheward developed the control charts. 1930 these are the uh, milestone what was achieved like that. Acceptance sampling I told that uh, that cannot reduce variability, but that was developed 1930 and still people are using uh, in processes uh, for supplier uh, products when when they are supplying to the uh, to your company uh, what type of plans do you do you implement. So, acceptance sampling plan is there. So, ok. So, uh, then 1950 around Ishikawa I, I discussed about cause and effect diagram 60 around uh, zero defects concept ok Crosby zero defects concept came into uh, existence. So, I want to minimize the defects like that. Uh, 80 Taguchi what I told is the robust design concept was popularized at the time point although he started the work around 50. So, 87 ISO 9000 or which was taken uh, from the concepts of total quality management and uh, that came into uh, that gives a guideline to the industry and companies or organizations how do we implement quality philosophies like that in in, in your organization like that and what are there will be some uh, 8 uh, 8 principles based on which uh, uh, 
uh, this uh, ISO 9000 was built like that. So, uh, 1987 8 principles of TQM. So, that was used uh, to develop this one. So, this is ISO 9000 and there are certifications. So, if you are a ISO certified company, uh, you uh, some of the uh, uh, your uh, client may be willing that uh, may be willing to uh, see that certification whether you are ISO certified or not, but many organization may not prefer to get this they, they may be needing some other certification like that, but this is in European uh, organization mostly they ask for this ISO 9000 certification. So, this was revised in 1984 87 it was uh, first started ISO 9000 1987 version then 1994 and uh, currently maybe 2015 was the latest version like that. Okay. So, uh, this is a international organization for standardization which has implemented this one. Then uh, Six Sigma was developed 86 to 89 like that and Lean Six Sigma philosophy also came into existence at that time point. Okay. So, Motorola started this concept of Six Sigma like that. So, we will uh, discuss some aspects of this also. And uh, in 2000 I told revision of ISO 9000, 2008 another revision came, 2015 is the fifth edition of uh, ISO 9000 that is I can, uh, these are the milestones what we can think of, there can be many more like this, but I have just highlighted uh, some of them. So, uh, we will uh, we will stop here uh, discussion uh, at this time point and uh, we will start with control aspects from the uh, subsequent classes. Okay. So, I hope you have understood the basic concept. So, uh, failure mode and effect analysis you can see many books are there on failure mode effect analysis, but what is important is that severity uh, occurrence and detection. So, that gives you a risk priority number, but this, that uh, also I mentioned that this can only be used when we have causes which are very independent from other causes. So, then that is a, a key idea what I want to emphasize over here. So, uh, cause and effect diagram is very important tool in quality. And then uh, Pareto diagram is also important to prioritize uh, risk priority number what we have mentioned like that and uh, based on that we will take some corrective recommended actions like that ok. So, then uh, robust design is also used in uh, quality of design like that. So, these are all things which you can think of uh, in quality of design what, what generally people follows and some of the quality tools which are also used in this. Uh, uh, quality of design and uh, then we will subsequently start with next sessions we will start with quality of conformance ok. So, let us stop over here and uh, continue in our next class session 8 on quality of conformance ok with quality using Minitab ok. So, thank you for listening we will uh, again start in session 8. Thank you.